Amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, also known as ALS and Lou Gehrig's disease, is a neurodegenerative disorder. Like other neurodegenerative disorders, ALS leads to the destruction of the human nervous system, and therefore a loss of function as a result. Like ALS, neurodegenerative diseases can be caused by many factors. Of these factors are faulty genes, which tends to be the case for 5-10% to of people. The cause could be developmental or due to the environment, including factors such as physical injuries, cancers, infections, and even smoking. By the end of this video, you will become experts on the structure of motor neurons, the development of motor neurons, the role of motor neurons, and also know how the function of these neurons is affected as the disease progresses. Our 100 billion neurons make up the cells of the nervous system. These cells specialize in communication within the body. What makes neurons good at communication is their structure. They are essentially like a wire with two ends or zones, which are the receptive zone, and this zone consists of the cell body, the nucleus, and dendrites that branch out from the cell body to receive signals and inputs from other neighboring neurons. After the cell receives a signal, it is passed down a long fiber called the axon, which can vary in length and can be as long as a meter. On the other end, we have the transmission zone, which is where the signals are transmitted to other neurons. This end branches out with little feet called terminal boutons. This two-zone structure allows for networks to be built and is what makes these cells great at communicating signals to different parts of the body quickly and efficiently. There are wires with two ends and those ends can be connected to any other wire. Each neuron receives inputs from thousands of other neurons through their dendrite and they transmit the signal to more neurons downstream. But how does this signal transmit to other neurons? A series of sudden changes in voltage across the membrane of the neuron leads to the signal traveling down the length of the axon once there is a trigger from the receptive zone. To illustrate how a signal is transmitted from one neuron to the next, imagine two runners in a relay. One runner, whom we'll call neuron A, is carrying the baton, which in this case is a chemical signal also known as a neurotransmitter. The second runner, standing and waiting for the baton, is neuron B. When the signal approaches the terminal boutons of neuron A, it is released in the similar fashion to how the first runner releases the baton. As soon as the baton, or neurotransmitter, binds to neuron B, neuron B can start running. This is essentially how signals are chemically transmitted across neurons. Motor neurons work in the same fashion, and they are the ones responsible for sending signals to our muscles. These signals lead to the muscles contracting and are what allows us to move voluntarily. The signals are controlled by the motor cortex, which is the area in the brain responsible for voluntary movement. Motor neurons actually develop early, soon after conception. When a fertilized egg becomes a bowl of cells, it is known as the inner cell mass, and it consists of stem cells that can specialize into any type of cell, and upon receiving certain chemical signals, they can begin to differentiate into cells of the nervous system. Eventually, certain hormones are released from other areas of the developing brain that cause certain genes in these neural cells to be turned on, which ensures that they are specifically developed into motor neurons. ALS is a neurodegenerative disease, which means that it causes the atrophy of neurons or in other words, the wasting away and decline in function due to the degeneration of cells. In ALS, motor neurons are the ones which atrophy. Upper motor neurons are those which begin the signaling pathway from the motor cortex, travel down the spinal cord, and connect with lower motor neurons which directly innervate our muscles. Disruptions in signals between upper and lower motor neurons can cause limb muscles to develop stiffness, movements to become slow and effortful, and tendon reflexes to be overactive. This eventually leads to the loss of the ability to control voluntary movement. Damage to the lower motor neurons specifically can lead to muscles not functioning properly as they are direct messengers that tells the muscles to contract. As the disease progresses, more and more motor neurons will atrophy. This is essentially mainly due to a neuron's lack of ability to transport nutrients to different parts of its axon. Think of a car that is filling up gas. When the pump is inserted in the fuel door, it will begin depositing fuel into the gas tank. What happens if the pump fails to do so? Eventually, whatever gas is left in the tank will be used up as the car drives, and when it does run out, the engine will break down. This is essentially what happens in the neuron. A lack of axonal transport leads to nutrients not reaching their destination across the nerve cells, and without these nutrients, cells will lose function and cell death or apoptosis is triggered. More than 2,000 people in this world are currently living with ALS, yet more research needs to be conducted in order for a cure to be developed or for some sort of intervention to be designed to improve the quality of life of these people. To find out more about ALS Canada, click on the link in the description. For more videos on ALS, visit the McMaster Demystifying Medicine YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.